Hey, and welcome back to another video. And again, carrying on with the whole SwiftUI data flow topic. So in today's video, we're basically going to be looking at observed object. Now I know this one is one that can be a bit confusing because it may be what is the actual purpose of using this property wrapper when managing SwiftUI data flow. Well, it does have its purposes. So like, what is observed object? So essentially what observed object is, is it's basically a property wrapper that we can use, which allows us to basically pass our observable object between different views. So when we actually pass it between different, so what do I mean by that? Well, essentially if we have a parent view, we can basically pass this object through to a child view. So the child view that has access to this observable object is actually able to read and write the data within our observable object class. Also carrying on from that, if you had a class with published properties within it, you can actually read and actually write these properties. So if you obviously read the property, you can read the current value of your published property, but also as well, you can actually write to them and actually by doing so actually cause the view to be redrawn as well. Now that we've actually gone through what it is, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to jump into an Xcode project and actually see a practical example of how this works and where we could use this. Let's do that now. Essentially, what we're going to go through is we're basically going to build a counter similar to what we did in our state object video, except this time, what we're going to do is we're actually going to have a child view that we use that will manage increasing and decreasing the counter. So let's start this now. So the first thing we need to do is actually build our view model. So let's do that now. And I'm just going to basically type out the actual uh, view model that we basically are going to be using. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail here about what the observable object um, type means, but if you are interested in it, I did talk about it in the previous video about state objects, so I definitely highly recommend you check that out. So let's just type this out now. So just a quick summary before we actually just go back to the main crux of this video. So essentially, we just basically got our view model. We have our counter, which is a published property because we want to basically cause some sort of changes in our view depending on when this counter changes. We have a function to increase the counter and we also have a function to decrease the counter. What we're going to do now is we're basically going to use this view model in our content view and actually declare it by using the state object property wrapper. So let's do that now. So let's go into our content view. And then let's use state object. Cool. So what we're going to do now is we're basically going to create a V stack and add a text in for our counter. So let's do that now. Our preview updates and it says account is zero. So what we want to do now is we actually want to basically build a view that we can basically have as our child view to basically manage increasing and decreasing our counter. So this child view is basically going to have our observed object that allows us to read and write the state objects that we'll inject into it. So let's do that now. So let's create a view called counter view. What we're gonna do now is we're actually going to declare our observed object. So let's do that now. And as you can see, because when you're working with observed objects, it's very similar to like bindings. You don't want to basically initialize this with a default value. You're basically using this property to link the two views together. So because of that, our preview is basically complaining and saying that it's missing the um, object because we need to actually inject it in. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to fix that now. And then in here, we're just going to pass it in our actual view model like so. So it has a reference to its own view model in the previews. And now what we need to do is we actually need to basically create our UI that will increase and decrease the counter on the screen that you see. So I'm just going to type this out now and then we'll break it down. So as you can see, we've now got our two buttons on the screen. And as you can see here, we're actually calling our view models function to increase and decrease our counter within our child view. So now what we need to do is we need to basically use this counter view within our parent view, which is the main content view. So let's do that now. We just go back here. So underneath our text, let's create our counter view. And as you can see, in the initializer is expecting us to pass in a reference to our view model. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pass our view model directly into here. So it's very important 
So it's very important that you don't do something like this. And the reason why you don't want to do something like this is because this is going to basically create a brand new uh, counter view model that isn't actually stored in memory. So we can actually read the value and write to it later on. So we want to use the state objects property here view model. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see how, because we've actually used an observe object to bind our view model between our parent and our child, we can actually increase the counter. So let's see that now. So now let's go to our preview. And as you can see, if I hit increase, you'll see that the counter increases by one. I'm going to keep going. If I hit decrease, you can see that the counter decreases um, by one as well. So we're able to actually now pass in references between our views by using observed objects. And that's probably the only use case of when you want to use it. So what we're going to do now is actually go to is go back to the presentation and see some final points on observed objects. Let's do that now. Right, cool. So where and when would you want to use our observed? All right, cool. So where and when would you actually want to use observed objects? So essentially, if you need to pass a reference of an observable object between views, then this is a very good use case. So if you have a child view that basically needs to access a view model and actually basically, you know, listen to changes or make changes, and um, then this will be a good use point. And also as well, if you want to, also as well, you want to make sure, like I said previously, you want to avoid using observe object to basically create view models because it's possible that the object can get released or it basically just loses its reference, you know, completely, you just don't have it anymore. That's everything today about observed object. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments about this video or any feedback, then leave it in the comment section below. Also as well, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. That's everything from me today. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.